All right, folks, here we are with section 2.5. That's finding sides now with sine, cosine, and tangent, or sine and cosine, okay? We've already done the tangent thing, uh, and we've already looked at sine, cosine, looking for angles. Uh, the one thing that you're going to have to remember here over and over and over is this thing called SOCATOA, all right? Now, quickly, if you can write down what this actually means or think about what this actually means, I'm going to show you uh, with the information that you get from this, what we call a mnemonic, kind of. If you want to discuss mnemonics in class, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, but what it is, it's a way to remember uh, whatever, uh, a sequence of things or an order of things, which is the same thing. Um, and this is, refers to the S is the sine, the C is the cosine, the T is the tangent, the O is the opposite side, the H is the hypotenuse, and the A is the adjacent. So it just shows the sides, the ratios that you need for each of these uh, sine, cos, or tan, right? Now, this is what it means. It means that your sine compares the opposite to the hypotenuse, okay? You your cosine compares the adjacent to the hypotenuse, and the tangent compares the opposite to the adjacent. Now, um, just like tan, okay, we've looked with tan, we have two different types of questions. Now, what you've looked at so far with sine and cosine are finding the angles. Given the opposite and the hypotenuse, what, how do we find the actual size of the angle, right? Now, some of you have used the trig tables. Some of you know how to use your calculators. I suggest you learn how to use both. Even though I'm not going to give you a trig table, maybe if you specifically ask, I'll give you one. But let's look at a couple different questions, okay? So first of all here, I'd like to look at these. I say that there's two different types, okay? Well, let's see how we can solve these. So first of all, identify your sides. You're looking at this angle. So this side and this side is what you're using. This compares the opposite to the hypotenuse. So what it is, is sine. Sine of what? Sine of 22 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, or straight over the hypotenuse. This statement right here is what you need to write down pretty much every time you do these questions, okay? And I'm going to look at this one over here right now and see if you can identify the statement that you're going to write down for this one. So we're dealing with sine, are we? Opposite hypotenuse, right? That's the ratio we're looking for. So now sine of the angle, which is 51 degrees, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Again, the statement that you need to write down for pretty much every one of these questions. Now the issue will be, how do you solve these? When I say there's two different types, okay, these are what I'm talking about. There's two different types. How do you solve it with the variable on top? How do you solve it with the variable on the bottom? Well, if you are proficient at algebra, this becomes significantly easier. If your algebra sucks, everything's gonna be that much harder, okay? So if you can honestly tell me that your algebra is good, fine. If you honestly can tell me that you need help with algebra, then get help with algebra. I will gladly help you, but you need to come in and talk to me. Look at some of the other videos, too, in my, in my playlist there. There are basic algebra videos, two or three of them, that describe the basic processes of solving equations. All right? Isolating the variable is one of the key components of solving an algebraic equation. If I want to isolate the x, I need to get rid of the 15. Division is occurring. The opposite is multiplication, so you multiply both sides by 15, and you end up getting a solution here. So now, uh, let's go on. Let's make sure I'm in the right mode. Uh, I'm in degree mode, which is good. So now, sine 22, enter times 15, I get an x value of 5.6. So that means that this side is 5.6 long, all right? That's one type of method, where the variable, ah, variable is on the top. And if the variable is on the top, what we do is we multiply, multi, whatever, so you spell it, you multiply, okay? Now let's look at this other one. I've got sine 51 is equal to 12 over x. The variable is on the bottom. Well. In order to isolate the variable, probably have to bring it over here and then put that down there. So what you end up in this situation is x is equal to 12 over sine 51. Now, some of you are going to have issues solving this on your calculators. I don't know what to say, but you got to figure it out, okay? My calculator is easy. It writes it out just like that. 
boom, I get an x value of 15.4, which means that the hypotenuse in this case is 15.4. Uh, a good thing to do is to check out, does it actually make sense? Is Should this be longer than this side? Since it's the hypotenuse, it absolutely should be longer. Okay, now let's go fill this in. If the variable's on the bottom, like it is here, what you do is you divide. Now, some of you are going to make the wrong division. Okay, you're going to go uh, sine 51 divided by 12. You're going to end up with a silly number like this. And obviously, you're going to be able to tell me that that number doesn't work. So if this division didn't work for you, flip it around and do the other one. Okay, um, there we go. So that's dealing with sine. Now, take a guess how we deal with cosine. Well, you know what? It's exactly the same thing, but we're using different sides. Oh, look, I didn't use different sides. Let me do that. Uh, let me put the X here. There you go. So now, if I'm looking at this angle here, right, that's my opposite hypotenuse adjacent. So I'm using A and H. So I'm going to use cosine. Cosine of 18 degrees is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. This is the statement you need to write down for every one of these questions. Let's quickly write the statement down for this, uh, which is your adjacent, which is your hypotenuse. Hopefully you can see that the hypotenuse is opposite that right angle. So we have cos 39 is equal to x, or sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse. So 7 over x. All right, there's our statements. And now, uh, in this case, variable on the top, so it's 22 times cos 18 is equal to x. So uh, I like doing my cos first. Cos 18, boom, times 22. I get 20.9. 20.9. In this case here, I have the x on the bottom. Let's rearrange it so that I can solve it. Cos 39, boom, there you go. And now it's going to be 7 divided by cos 39. And we have an answer of 9 exactly. Uh, we're going to have questions that uh, word problem type questions where you're going to have to draw the triangles. We're going to be talking about angle of elevations, angle of depressions, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to sort all that stuff in class. All right.